Hi guys, today I am at Old Bedford Village. Um, it is a village in southern Pennsylvania where all of these buildings weren't built here, but they were brought here from other places and restored. And uh, we're just kind of walking through seeing the old schoolhouse. We've seen um, the pub, which is right behind me, the tavern. Um, but yeah, my dad and I are just kind of walking through and checking the place out. I haven't been here in over 20 years. We used to come as kids, so hope you guys enjoy. Once at Old Bedford, you start off by going through the Welcome Center, and I couldn't pass up the chance to lock my father up, so here he is in the stocks. Uh, we saw a nice old carriage here, and then it's just got some beautiful scenery around the area. Now, semi-funny story, as we were walking into this first building, um, my dad walked past, and a wasp, as it flew past, attacked him and stung him. So that was a wonderful start to our trip. Thankfully, he was okay. It just left a mark for quite a while. If your dream is to get married in an old church surrounded by a pioneer village, look no further. Old Bedford has you covered. Old Bedford dedicates several of its buildings to teaching about the Native Americans that lived in the area before the settlers came through and settled down. So throughout the video and throughout these buildings, you'll see some things that have been used by these Native Americans and some information about the different tribes. Here's the general store. You could actually buy some candy and other items here. I'm sure back then they did not have electricity though for the ice cream. Uh, I really enjoyed this part. They had these little horses to ride and take around with you if you would like. I've also included this old document that is written in German because a lot of the settlers in Pennsylvania were of German descent and that's where you get Pennsylvania Dutch. So a lot of the traditions, foods, all of those things surrounding the German culture are seen today even in Pennsylvania. Here you can see a German brew house, which unfortunately did not have anybody manning the bar. But the next building led into the story of the Whiskey Rebellion. The Whiskey Rebellion was a violent tax protest during the 1790s when George Washington was in office. Now the water in these small towns wasn't always the cleanest, so they would distill whiskey and create this alcohol, and even the children would drink it because it was better for them than the water. And Bedford, as well as many other small towns, decided to fight back on the taxes that were being imposed. So they would take tax collectors and they would tar and feather them. As a teacher myself, I really enjoyed learning about the old schoolhouse and seeing how the teachers taught back in the day. Now, there was a list of rules that were given for teachers, and honestly, I don't think I could have taught back then. It, it just sounded like it was too strict. My favorite thing about going into the apothecary was that they showed lists 
of different herbs that they use as medicines for different things, ailments and whatnot. So go ahead and pause if you'd like to read some of the different uh, uses of these herbs and plants. were much more simple back in the 1700s. They were used to hold drunks who just needed to sleep off the alcohol or to hold criminals just until there could be a trial and then the punishment was carried out and the punishment was usually pretty severe. I thought about locking my dad up in the jail for a little bit but then I decided he might be better used helping me find some gold in the next part of the town. The blacksmith was very informative. He was working hard. He tried to get the fire started to give us a demonstration, but we told him that it was way too hot outside and we weren't going to make him add more heat to the building. So he just told us a little bit about what he does, what he makes on the side. Um, it's amazing. He's actually even been on a TV show for his blacksmith skills. brought back some memories for me because I remember when I was just in elementary school uh, getting one of those sheets of metal you would take a nail and a hammer and hammer holes in according to the design and somewhere in all of my belongings back in Pennsylvania I still have mine from when I was a wee lass. After exploring the village, my father and I went to the Jean Bonnet restaurant, which is said to be the most haunted restaurant in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, we didn't see any ghosts, but we did see my dream car. Now, if only this Stingray Corvette could be in a cherry red color. <laughs> um, I did have some spinach artichoke dip and some French onion soup. The staff was amazing, the service was wonderful, and the food was great. So check them out if you're ever in the area. I had so much fun spending time in Old Bedford with my dad. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out our journey. If you're ever interested in going, I would love to give you more information about it, so just let me know. Um, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Any love helps share the videos. Um, gets the word out there. So I'm hoping to post some more content coming soon. Sorry for the long break, but I hope you all have a wonderful day and in omnia Pradas. <laughs>